battlefield all but dead. We need someone to fill its shoes. Thankfully, a developer known as Steel Raven decided to tackle the concept. For years, this seemed like nothing but a joke game. Something only large gaming YouTubers would make a video on. Eventually, the game would evolve and improve, going from blocks and itch.io to a more detailed game with a price tag. This is Ravenfield, the indie version of old school Battlefield with tons of mod support. Plus, the vanilla game is still lacking in content and has some hiccups with AI issues. But you know what? Let's just get into the review already and talk about everything this game has to offer. first mode available in the game is Conquest, which doesn't have much going for it due to how early in development this entire mode is. You basically play a game of Risk and conquer maps on the board. You can earn resources to unlock new weapons, gear, explosives, vehicles, and more to give yourself an advantage. You can recruit troops with the resources you also get and amass a bunch of them on a single tile to reinforce that one to have a better chance of defense and also to move them to invade the next tile over. It's kind of a bit like Star Wars Battlefront 2 Galactic Conquest and stuff. It's overall an okay mode, I just don't really care for it right now. I feel like we have to wait until it's more fleshed out to see what it really has to offer. So let's talk about the better mode instead. Instant action. With instant action, you're able to create your own unique experiences. Choose the map, game mode, balance of units per team, the player faction, character skins, weapons, vehicles, mutators, night option, choose the flags and starting positions, and then save presets and more. It's loaded to the brim with options and I love it. You can make all kinds of experiences, especially with mods, which we will cover later. For now, let's move on to the controls. When it comes to controls, the game is pretty smooth. The movement is good and the shooting is passable for an indie game, though some weapon types like assault rifles, LMGs, and handguns can be a bit spotty. It's not AAA smooth, but it's not old school AAA tankish like Call of Duty 1 or Medal of Honor 1. Vehicles handle okay at best, nothing special. Tanks are tanky, boats are boaty, and ATVs are a tailbone's worst nightmare. But when it comes to planes, I'd say stay away from them, as they're a pain. Same thing with helicopters. But one annoying thing above the controls is the game's feature of a knockdown effect. So much so that there's a mod to disable it and it's one of the most popular mods out there. You can easily get hit from something and get knocked down, easily being one shot by enemies, or in my case most of the time, the stupid AI teammates. The first instant action game mode we'll cover is Point Match. In this one, you must kill the enemy and take capture points. This will rack up points, and you must score 300 of them before they do to win. The more capture points, the faster your score builds up. It's okay, 
but I'd rather just play battle mode instead. Speaking of battle mode, being this game's conquest, let's talk skirmish instead. Skirmish is a bastardized conquest mode from Battlefield. You only have one life. It must take capture points while depleting the enemy's reinforcements and holding out until they have no more airdrops of soldiers. And in turn, you do too. I didn't like it at all. Just play battle mode instead. This mode is just meh. A mode I hate is Spec Ops. It's just a weird mode where you do random tasks in any map you choose. With only three teammates, it must evacuate in the end. I did not care for it one bit and was quick to stop playing after about three minutes. In fact, it was so boring just running around an empty map and the only time I had any encounters, any fights, was one where it was just a jeep driving around with three enemies in it and I just sniped them all to death and that was it. I was confused on what to do and where to go. I was running all around all over the place. I just don't care for it at all. Speaking of bad game modes, let's cover this game's version of Call of Duty Zombies. You ever wanted the world's worst Call of Duty Zombies mode? Well, it's not the modern Call of Duty games that have it like Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 4 and all that stuff in Vanguard. No, Ravenfield has it and it's called Haunted. You must run around and find anomaly capture points and fend off hordes of skeletons while staying within the area otherwise you're killed by the anomaly. It's boring and barely works with most maps as skeletons will not even spawn in or they'll take forever to get to you because of AI issues and nav mesh problems. It's just not fun, especially because it's only you and a small squad and you don't even get to choose your weapons or anything, it's just trying to survive with barely any supplies. I just don't care for it at all. Thankfully, the next game mode is actually quite good. I never bothered with it before until this review, and it's called DOMINATION. Every round, you must hold one of three capture points, or at least try to get all three, to build up enough power to get the bar above to fill with your color instead of the enemy's color to win the round. If whoever loses, loses a point. You have three points, and you must try to deplete the enemies each round by holding all the capture points. Whoever loses all their points loses the match. It's overall a tense, fun, fast-paced mode, and it's just, I can't say this enough, it's, it's actually really good. I wish I played this mode a whole lot sooner. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. The best mode in this game by far is Battle, which is Ravenfield's conquest mode from Battlefield. Also the best mode in Battlefield. You just run around taking every capture point trying to take out the enemy tickets slash reinforcements the more points you have the quicker their numbers dwindle as you capture all the flags whoever reaches zero first loses you should know what conquest is if you ever played battlefield let alone the real star wars battlefront games by pandemic studios instead of the horrible dice ones in ea overall it's just a whole lot of fun and with all the mods you can get it can be pure chaos. Speaking of mods, let's cover those next.
Since EA is nowhere to be found, you can bet this game allows for custom content instead of overpriced crappy DLCs. So users can add to the experience as well as change the game overall. You can play a traditional battlefield experience You can make the game into a medieval hack and slash akin to Mountain Blade. How about some zombie survival with one side the military, the other side fast moving undead? How about maps that recreate Left 4 Dead 2 Dark Carnival Campaign? <laughs> Want some stalker in your game with a bit of cheeky breaky? Or what about Shrek Zombies? Yeah, there's all kinds of skins, weapons, maps, vehicles, mutators, and more to play with. In fact, you can even duke it out in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. But sadly, because the game is in early access, every update has a high risk of breaking all these amazing mods, and a lot of them have been abandoned and can no longer be used in game. But then there's other cons to using mods, such as performance will dip dramatically depending on various factors like number of bots, polygons, models, particle effects, map, graphical settings, and more. But another con to using mods with Ravenfield is the boot up time. Much like The Sims 3, Ravenfield has long loading times if you choose to download a bunch of Steam Workshop mods. Now let's talk about the AI in this game. You may be wondering, how good is this game's AI, given it's a Battlefield clone and made by an indie developer? Get it on the go! <laughs> They're not that great. In fact, most of the deaths were both sides of the war will be entirely from blowing themselves up, crashing their vehicles, and of course, standing in front of moving vehicles like tanks and planes trying to take off. Yet, in turn, they can aimbot you across the map with a handgun. Honestly, I cannot comprehend the AI in this game. One minute, it's dumb and getting killed by its own teammate. The next, it's on a killing spree, like a meth head in Unreal step, Tournament. Step, 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 step. It's not a huge deal, but it's something worth pointing out. The last thing I want to cover is the in-game map editor. With it, you can make your own maps with very limited resources. Unless, of course, you make the map within Unity itself and import it into the game with third-party tools like some of the most popular map creators do. But if you don't want to deal with all the hassle, especially with Unity and all its controversy over the last couple years, then just stick to the in-game editor with its limited scope. You won't be making anything mind-blowing, but it's still a fun time and gives you more options for content, so 
if you want a certain kind of map, but you can't find it on the Steam Workshop, just make it yourself. That's what I did for many ideas. At the end of the day, Ravenfield is a bit on the average side of a game. On one hand, it's doing what DICE won't do with Battlefield. On the other hand, it's got some faults that hold it back from being a great game. Honestly, I do recommend it, despite its hiccups, as the simple fun and large quantity of mods helps keep it enjoyable. But the vanilla experience leaves a lot to be de desired. Hopefully that will be resolved with future updates. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all later.